Welcome to episode two of Ask Your Scientists. What is mass spectrometry and what are its challenges? I'm joined with Michelle Dubuque, manager of field application scientist and mass spec expert to discuss what mass spectrometry is uh, and some of the pain points researchers in the field, specifically of proteomics, have with the technologies that are available today. Um, before we get into that, uh, Michelle, why don't you give us some background on your experience with mass spec? Thanks, Cheyenne. I'm really excited to be here talking to you about this today. Uh, mass spec is absolutely one of my favorite technologies, and I could go on for hours and hours talking about it and bore everybody to death, but I will definitely try to keep it a little bit on the shorter side. My background in mass spec came from my postdoc. I spent a fair bit of time in graduate school analyzing mass spec data, and when I graduated, realized that I had been analyzing data from a technology I knew nothing about. So I decided for my postdoc to join a core facility that focuses on mass spectrometry. And it was easily one of the best decisions I've made because I got to experience interacting with customers. I got to learn about all the really cool science that was happening at my university. And to top it all off, I got to spend a lot of time with this technology, having to think about really creative ways to analyze samples and to get researchers the data that they needed to do their science. So I spent a number of years at a core facility. I spent a little bit of time at an instrument vendor where I worked on the new mass specs coming out to market and developing translational proteomics applications for them. Mm. Okay, great. Uh, and then jumping into our conversation, um, what is mass spectrometry? At a basic level, mass spectrometry is measuring the mass of something. If you have a molecule that you can apply a charge to and that you can get out of liquid and into gas, then you can put it into a mass spectrometer and determine the exact mass of that molecule. In terms of how that applies to proteomics, you can use it to look at proteins, you can use it to look at peptides, you can use it to look at changes that proteins and peptides undergo in, during natural biological processes. But at its core, the technology of mass spectrometry really is just about measuring the mass of an individual particle. Mm -hmm. And so thinking about, um, you know, mass spec technology uh, available, you know, for people who, who want to do that kind of research, what are the kinds of technologies that are, that are available today? There are quite a few different mass spec based technologies that exist and a lot of different vendors that offer these different technologies. In particular, when you're talking about the field of discovery proteomics specifically, where you're not trying to target a specific protein, but you're just trying to look globally at what's available in your sample, there's really two technologies that stand out. One of them is the Orbitrap based technology, which has incredible precision and allows you to measure the mass of an individual molecule down to the down to the mass of the electron, mm -hmm. up to four decimal places with the mass of the molecule. These are used by spinning that molecule around a magnetic spindle and seeing how fast it moves from side to side as it's spinning. Mm -hmm. Things that are bigger move more slowly. Things that are smaller move faster. And you can then use software algorithms to deconvolute that on the back end. The other type of technology is the time of flight technology, where all of your molecules come through at the same time and then you give them an elect electromagnetic push and they go down to the bottom and bounce and then fly up to the top of the detector and how long it takes for them to get from the bottom to the top is again a measure of how large they are. Time of flight type technology or TOF technology is a lot faster mm -hmm. than Orbitrap based technology but it does suffer a little bit in how accurate you can determine how accurately you can determine the mass although you're still talking about three decimal places after the mass instead of four from Orbitrap technology. Mm -hmm. And then so thinking more about proteomics research, um, why is mass spec the, the, I guess, standard data acquisition method? Well, I think you have to be careful calling it the standard data acquisition method. I would say that it is the most unbiased data acquisition method. It is the data acquisition method that really allows you to dig deeper into your sample and get an understanding of what's present. When you talk about proteomics, you can talk about a variety of different techniques, and most of them are more targeted. You use antibody or aptamer-based technologies that have specificity for the proteins you're looking for, and you can measure anywhere from several 
several tens to several thousands of individual proteins, but you're still only measuring the proteins that you are looking for. You're not measuring anything else. And in a lot of ways, you're blind to anything on the protein that's not the protein itself. Do you have post-translational modifications? Do you have different decorations that the cell has put onto these proteins before different decorations that the cell has put onto these proteins to enable them to have better functionality. You're blind to all of that with a lot of these antibody or aptamer-based technologies. With mass spectrometry, you're seeing everything. You're taking your protein, you're digesting it down to the individual peptides, and you're looking at the mass of that peptide. You don't care if that peptide is unmodified. You don't care if that peptide has additional decorations on it that changes functionality in the cell. You have the ability to see all of that, and you're only limited by physics and only limited by how low in concentration can you detect these molecules. And so it's really just a very powerful technology for doing unbiased research and to really dig in and see things that have never been seen before. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're talking a lot about, um, or you mentioned target versus discovery. Uh, this sounds a lot like the, the evolution of data acquisition, specifically in genomics. Uh, can you speak a little more on that? It's absolutely the same evolution. We started with being able to do sequencing, where you see a, you have a single strand of DNA, and you want to know what the sequence of that single strand of DNA is, so you amplify and you sequence that single strand of DNA. Once we started being able to do that on one, then we started being able to do that on many, and then you saw the evolution of microarrays, where you could do detection, again, of hundreds or thousands of individual targets, but you still were going after targets. It was things that you, you knew what you were looking for, and you were looking to see if they were there. And the goal was to put as many of them, pile as many of them as possible into one assay to try to mimic discovery. But then with the evolution of next-gen sequencing, you're doing true discovery work, where you're actually looking and seeing everything or almost everything that's present. And again, you have your challenges. There's things you can't see when you do next gen, but you're still in theory seeing everything and have the ability to make these unbiased discoveries. Proteomics is undergoing that evolution as well. You know, you have your single antibody technologies, things like ELISA assays, where you can look for one or a couple of individual targets. And then you have these large panels of antibody or aptamer based technologies that are looking at huge cohorts of proteins, thousands of proteins. But again, you're trying to cram as many targets into a single assay. And now as we're moving into more discovery proteomics using mass spectrometry, which has been around for a very long time, but is definitely coming more to the forefront now that the mass spec technology and the separations technology and the sample prep technology has gotten so much better. But now you're able to look and see what you didn't see before, and you're only limited by your knowledge of the cell. You're no longer limited, and you're limited by physics. You're no longer limited by how many targets can you cram into a single assay to really be able to look and see what's present during your experiment. Um, in your experience, what, what are some of the challenges with the technology? It's not, it's not friendly for beginners. You know, being able to do discovery proteomics the mass spec is only one part of it. The other part of it is how do you do your separations and your sample prep up front to be able to actually give the mass spec time to acquire the data to do the reading. Mm -hmm. So the mass specs have gotten faster and faster, which is helping. But the upfront sample preparation is quite difficult and laborious, especially when you're talking about difficult biofluids like plasma, where 99% of the mass is taken up by the top 22 proteins present in the sample. Those kinds of technologies are very difficult, very labor intensive. You then get into the separations technologies where you want to get as, as good sensitivity as you can to really concentrate things really tightly before you feed them into the mass spec to give the mass spec the ability to see deep and to be able to overcome some of the challenges of how low into the sample you can see. And those technologies require using flow rates that are almost impossible to perceive. You know, you're talking about flow rates that are at hundreds of nanoliters per minute. And if you just try to conceptualize what that looks like, and you're thinking about a fluidic system, how do you find the leak in that system? How do you 
troubleshoot when something's going wrong, when you can barely even visualize the speed at which these liquids are flowing. Mm -hmm. And then you get into the mass specs themselves, which are very, very complicated instruments. And a lot of the vendors have made huge advancements in trying to make these instruments more user-friendly so that you don't need to have an expert with one, three, five, ten years of experience sitting in front of the instrument to be right. able to do the analysis. But they're still difficult, and it's still a specialist's field, for better or for worse, even though it does seem we're moving away from that. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, like like you said, it seems like we're moving away from that. What does the, the, the future of mass spec technology look like? I think we're going to get to the point, like with next-gen sequencing, where it becomes a benchtop instrument, where any researcher who wants to be able to do unbiased proteomics has access to a mass spectrometer to be able to do their research. I think we're going to see the instruments get faster. We're going to see them get easier and we're going to see them get more sensitive so that we're no longer limited in the same way by how much material is present in the sample. And I think we're also going to see all of those upstream sample preparation technologies get a lot better. They're going to make it so that we can see deeper and we can see more than we've ever been able to see before. And the that revolution is going to go all the way from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. And then finally, data analysis, because we've been talking all about the data acquisition and how do you get to data acquisition, right. yeah. but analyzing that data is complicated. And you run into a lot of the same problems that genomics ran into with how do you handle big data. And so I think all of those data algorithms and the statistics that go along with them are also going to be a huge revolution over the next few years. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I, I'm, I personally am excited to see, um, you know, what these technology platform companies come up with to, to really help people, especially doing proteomics research, um, get to do the kind of research that they want to do. Um, Michelle, thank you for sitting down with me uh, for this conversation. Thank you, everyone, for listening to episode two of Ask Your Scientists. What is mass spectrometry and what are its challenges? Mm -hmm.